Here is our middle or light tail of the tape. We move up to the super middleweight division. Zach Christie from Warwick, Rhode Island, making his pro debut, fighting out of Tampa, Florida. He weighed in at 167 yesterday, and he takes on the tough veteran from Framingham, Mass., Saul Almeida. He weighed in at 167 and a half. You see the slight height advantage for Almeida. We'll see how that plays out for now. We'll send it down to our ring announcer, Adam Palacio. This is the Miller Light and Jim Beam bout of the evening. This fight is scheduled for four rounds in the super middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, weighing in at 167 and a half pounds, a veteran of five professional fights, hailing from Framingham, Massachusetts, ladies and gentlemen, Saul the Spider Almeida. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, Weighing in at 167 pounds, making his professional debut, a protege of the late, legendary Tiny Richie. He is a U.S. Air Force veteran serving over nine tours of duty. Ladies and gentlemen, hailing from Warwick, Rhode Island, by way of Tampa, Florida, Zach Christie! Clean fight, protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. I love you both. Touch them up. Your referee is Mike Ortega. Round one underway, we're back live at Twin River Casino. Mike Parenti joined by Scott Ream. We are in the super middleweight division. Zach Christie, the Z-man in the blue trunks, taking on Saul the Spider Almeida in the black and gold. And Saul Almeida is a veteran of the ring, certainly a veteran of the cage, as we all know in mixed martial arts. But as a boxer, he's got that awkward style, awkward stance, very tough to hit, somewhat elusive. He will go in there and throw a lot of punches. He is 0-5, Scott, but he's never been stopped in any pro fight. And for Zach Christie tonight, it's actually a tough challenge in his pro debut. Well, it's tough to, to try to get past the height advantage, you know, especially at your pro debut. You haven't had the experience in working. So we'll also will like to switch his stance a lot, which is fairly unorth unorthodox. He's an unorthodox fighter by, by nature. Now, Christy, as we mentioned, was trained by the late, great Tiny Ritchie in Rhode Island, moved down to Tampa, Florida, where he began serving in the U.S. Air Force, was deployed nine times in more than eight years. God bless him. In Kuwait, Afghanistan, Africa, among others. Came back no longer in active duty and now resuming his boxing career and making his debut at the age of 30. But as his father pointed out, Antonio Tarver also debuted at 30, and he had quite a career. So there's always hope, no matter what. You know as well as I do, I like it when the older guys debut. What Zach needs to do is find a way to get inside Saul's jab, get inside the length, and work the body. Chop the body down, bring the hands down, and go up to the head. Don't head hunt, throw his punches to his chest, to his, you know, to his chest a lot, and then go upstairs behind that. And this is what Saul's gonna try to do is to push him off and clinch. Referee's gonna have a, uh, a busy night tonight. He will. Salamita has a five inch height advantage on Zach Chrissy. And as you mentioned, Scott, he's got to find his way on the inside and be able to neutralize that height advantage. And we'll see as the fight progresses how that goes. Christie, one of the newest protégés for CES Boxing, many of whom are featured on tonight's card. In addition to that great main event, we have the future. I love watching the, the pro debuts. Boxing. I love to see who's coming up. We've seen Ray Oliveira Jr. tonight. We're seeing Zach Christie. Later on, Scott Sullivan. And of course, uh, we also saw in our last card, Kiari Gray Pins, he fights for the second time tonight later on as well. Right. So again, it's the future of New England boxing on display, and Zach Christie appears to be a promising prospect. Trained in uh, St. Petersburg out of the St. Pete Boxing Club with Dan Birmingham and world champion Keith Thurman. So he nice double has left hook by Zach, body head, head body. Now if you notice, you'll see Saul, he's not, he's not turning his shoulder, he's not sitting on the jab. It's totally arm punching off the jab, trying to stay outside. And he's bleeding already, so. 
Christie's starting to find his way on the inside, Scott, here at the end of the round. It's going to be sloppy. It's going to look sloppy because Zach needs to get inside, and he, he needs to do whatever it, he, he has to do to get inside. It might look rough. It might look street. But once he gets inside, he just has to go to work. Round number one in the books. Let's listen into to Salah Salah Mita's corner. Put the ice on him. Put the ice on his back. Give me the water, T. Give me the water, T. Open up. Got it. Open up the water, breathe, so to speak. Yep, got it. So, he didn't take another person, oh man. He didn't take another. So, make that decision. Huh? Beleza. Vamos colocar um pouquinho mais de pressão agora, só. Esse round foi pra pau, entendeu? Give me the towel. All right, round number two on the way. Zach Christie in the blue trunk. Saul Almeida in the black and gold. Mike Parenti joined by Scott Ream ringside here at Twin River Casino. As we mentioned toward the end of the first round, Zach Christie has to try to find a way to fight on the inside, even if he has to eat some shots on the way in. Almeida not really known for his power. He can certainly afford to take a few shots to work on the inside. Well, as you can see, Saul's constantly changing. His footwork's not traditional by any stretch of the imagination. And Saul's corner, as we heard in between rounds, you know, the, they're telling him the jab right hand is, is right there. And I guess it would be at length, at distance. Sure. But as you can see here, Saul's not, he's not fighting backing up. He's not throwing punches backing up. That's all he's doing is stiff arming and retreating. So by my standard, I, even if Saul put the brakes on and threw a right hand, but that's not what he's doing. He's just kind of keeping him at bay with a stiff arm. And Zach really needs to work side to side to get himself in. And he is. Decent flurry there for Almeida with Christie against the ropes. Nothing really doing any damage. I think you were right in the first round too, Scott, when you said that Christie really can't afford a headhunt. The body's there at this height. Might as well work the body first and try to chop him down. If, if you put your one hand on the, on the body, if you put your left hand on his chest, the right hand's going to instinctively know where the head is. Land the chest, land the body, don't hunt the head. Just like that, he went left hook to the body, left hook to the head, and he landed beautifully. Find the body first. See, all they gotta do is listen to you, Scott. <laughs> well, of course, it's easier said than done, <laughs> and I am in the comfort of this chair. <laughs> Halfway through you. round number two here, Zach Christie and Almeida left upstairs by Christie. Almeida fighting Here's back. Here's another left hook to the body, left hook to the head by Zach that, that's landing on a regular basis. There it is again. And again, the thing with Almeida, he is cagey, he is awkward, doesn't have a lot of punching power, so you can't absorb these shots, although he took a good one there from the left by Almeida. But again, Christy not hurt, he's still coming forward. Yeah, and, and so Almeida's punches are slapping punches. They're, they're, they're not being sat on, there's very little power with them. They're arm punches. Nice job by Zach moving in and out. Good head movement thus far, too, by Chrissy. He knows how to get out of the way. He does. The hardest part is, is when you move back or you're backing out and you're on the shoulder fighter, that's when you put yourself in harm's way from the taller fighter hitting you on the exit or on the out. That's so a very good point. Playing those angles, nice job. Another left hook that's landed by Zach. That's why you want to play those angles on the exit. Now, this is right where Zach wants him to be. If he can stay on the ropes and suck Saul in, that's gonna, so he's gonna allow Saul to close the distance far. Might not be a bad idea to just kinda suck him back into the ropes a little bit. We'll see if that's part of the strategy between rounds. Round number two in the book. Let's listen into Zach Christie's corner, Chucky Sullivan and Victor Fagnan. Stay on his body. 
body once you get What did he say? Move the right hand. Round number three on the way. Zach Christie, Saul Amita. You heard Zach Christie's corner telling him to work the jab, work the body, and then come with that looping right hand over the top. Absolutely. That's what we've been saying, Mike, is for him to get into work, to, to touch the body, keep going to the body, it's going to make the head available. If you can touch the body two, three times, it's going to bring your opponent's hands down, also going to give you a good range finder, and you bring your last punch over the top. What Zach's been doing very well is left hook to the body, left hook to the head. What his corner's asking him to do is throw three, four, five punches to the body, overhand right. Nice exchange here in the center of the ring with Almeida and Christie. You also heard Victor Fagdan in the corner tell Zach, listen, he's gonna try to hold. When he holds, you let your hands go, don't hold back. Yeah, this is not MMA. You don't have to worry about getting taken down. It's your opponent's hands are, wants to push you off, rip his body. Your opponent's hands are not punching you, then <laughs> you're in business. Makes perfect sense. We'll see if Christie can execute the game plan. Round three of a scheduled four in the super middleweight division. The one thing about Christie, he's always a moving target in the ring, Scott. Always moving that head, keeping out of harm's way. You know, you, you say things like, like if you slip a punch, it's not about being missed completely, it's about it grazing. Nice left hand by Christie there. Now he's rolling under and doubling up. There's your short right hand. He's starting to feel it now. Good defense, good rolling. And he's, he was bringing Saul Amita into the corner. Now he's chasing him out. Now the shorter fighter is controlling distance very, very well. But the idea of a slip is just, if it grazes you, just as long as it doesn't hit your flesh. If it misses you completely, that's, that's ice cream. That's, that's the best part of it. Nice left hook. Christie trying to chop down the five foot 11 Almeida here in this third round, just under a minute to go. Zach Christie's corner told him to throw the jab, even if it's to the body, jab him up. Nice short left hook again. So coming forward, and this is where Zach Christie's corner wants him just to throw punches, just like he's doing right now. There it is. Nice job. That distance really jams up the longer fighter's reach. He, he has to shorten his punches up. It doesn't look like Saul knows how to do it very well. This is exactly where Christie wants to be. Final 30 Christie seconds. Christie is scoring in large volume right now. Making Saul miss and making him pay. This is a big round, a big finish for Christie in my opinion. Another big nice right hand job. on the way out too. He doubled up, right hook, left hook to the body that scored. And again, here he is leaning on him. He should let his hands go. Yeah, Christie much more effective with those shorter punches. Doesn't have those long arms like Almeida. We can see, like, right here, you can see Saul leaning on him. He's not punching if he's holding him. He's not punching him if he's leaning on him. Three rounds in the books in this scheduled four-round super middleweight bout. Let's listen into Saul Almeida's corner between rounds. Entendeu? Você falou com ele na corda, mantenha a sua distância, onde você vai socar, você vai acertar, ele vai tentar vir no contra-ataque e não vai achar nada. Entendeu? Você mantém do lado de fora, só. Keep that right hand straight. Não dá nada. Ele está cansado também, bicho. É o último round. Entendeu? Vamos ver esse round, você ganha a luta, pô. Ele está movendo sua cabeça. 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 Get him on the ropes, that left up cut, keep that hand right back up. Interesting advice between rounds. Almeida's corner telling him the left uppercut is there as Christie moves his head. So maybe I'll agree with him on that. He right. hasn't thrown one uppercut. I haven't seen him throw no. an uppercut yet. He's well, throwing, trying straight and winging, winging punches. If Saul just measured him with the jab and threw an uppercut on. We'll see what happens here. Round number four of the scheduled four round super middleweight bout. Mike Parenti joined by Scott Ream ringside here at Twin River Casino. Zach Christie in the blue trunks taking on Saul Amida in the black and the gold. It's been an entertaining fight thus far. A lot of action. Zach Christie fighting well off the ropes. And it seemed to close the gap on that height advantage and that reach advantage by Saul Amida. Well, Saul dancing around a lot right now, but not doing anything with it. No, and he needs a knockout to win this fight, so he really can't afford to dance. He's going to have to go in on Christie and see if he can score a knockout. 
He's yet to win in five. Nice right straight balance. right here, and he doubled up the left hook. Christie did and finished with the right hand over the top. And that right Just like his attention. corner called for. Nice job. Now as they get closer, we'll see when Christie does go against the ropes, and it's only inevitable that he will do so at some point if Almeida will go with that left uppercut. Almeida should be throwing the uppercut in combination with just the height advantage. That's gonna be his chance to score and win this fight if possible. Jab right uppercut, right cross, you know, just something simple. I haven't seen Almeida go to the body. Here's your uppercut now from the clinch. It doesn't seem like he will throw it unless he's right in on the inside, Scott. Not from a distance, although he tried to feign one there. Nothing on it. Now Christie kind of backing into that corner where he wants to be. Fighting at a close distance, landing again, Scott, like he did in round three. He's scoring very well. He's rolling, he's punching off the roll. Defense is good. Saul is actually holding and punching. I don't know if the referee can see it. I mean, this is a great exchange here. right here. But I still have to say that, that Zach, Zach Christie, he's, he's getting the better of these exchanges in tight, which he should with the height. Now he's measuring better Zach Christie is, and Saul's just kind of hanging on when they're getting close. Sure, the shorter fighters should be able to fight better on the inside, no question about that, and Christie has done it. Final seconds here of this fight. Well, you, don't, you want to stay inside as long as you can. You pay daily. Oh, no, there's a left hook. I don't know if his knee touched the ground or not, but it definitely rocks Saul. That's the most hurt we've seen on Mita in a boxing match. I thought his knee touched the ground as well, Scott. He rocked him with that right, that left hook, rather. I don't know if the referee saw it, but it looked like that knee might have touched. And, and Zach is doing a great job of trying to find his chin again, going from body to head, head to body. As the shorter fighter, you pay daily for that real estate. When you get inside, you don't want to give it up, and that's what he's doing right now. Nice short uppercut, nice short left hooks. Excellent, excellent job. I'm dying to see that replay and see if Saul's knee hit the ground. I like to see it as well, Scott. Great finish for Zach Christie. Another valiant effort for Saral Almeida. But Zach Christie, a learning experience in this fight for him. What a challenge in his pro debut to fight a taller fighter. And Absolutely. have to learn right away how to get on the inside and deal with adversity. This was some adversity to a certain degree against that taller fighter. Not just the height, Mike, but you mentioned it at the beginning, the unorthodox nature of Saul's fights. This is a really funny guy to fight. And to get it out of the way early is yeah. a plus. Definitely not your typical pro debut opponent. Certainly a guy that you don't always want to have to face. A lot of times they match him against guys who are more familiar, who are more common to that fight, and that was not the case for Zach Christie. He took a tremendous challenge in his debut and put on a great performance. High volume of punches, as we expected to see. And we're gonna take a look here at the replay, Scott, from this fourth and final round. Watch for that left hook, there it is. Oh, but we need a wider angle to see if we can catch that knee. He went down deep. I think he more or less just squatted and popped back up quickly. I don't know if we have a different angle on that, but, but he dropped at, at, at Saul's height of six feet tall, dropping that many inches. Whee. Either way, it's a convincing performance for Zach Christie, who has more than likely won this fight, most likely on or every round on all three scorecards. We will see I, what I the decision is. Round. But we'll send it down to Adam Palazzo now for the official decision. How about a round of applause for these two brave warriors? After four great rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Judge Clark San Martino scores it 40 to 36. Judge Don Trella scores it 40 to 36. Judge Eddie Scunzio scores it 40 to 36. For your winner, by unanimous decision, the former protege of legendary Tiny Richie, ladies and gentlemen, Zach. Part of the new generation, Christie!